There is going to be absolutely no information overload in this video, and I am going to teach you how to hit the ground running as a beginner for Unholy Death Knight in patch 10.2.5, season 3 of Dragonflight. Starting off with the stat priority, you are going to want to take eye level and strength over absolutely everything. An eye level upgrade is always going to be the best. Now, if you do want to look a bit further into those secondary stats, the first one you're going to want is mastery and then haste then crit, and a very small amount of versatility. This is the main secondary stat priority, and this one is mainly focused around raiding. If you are doing predominantly Mythic Plus, I would just swap crit and haste around, and maybe get a little bit more versatility. But overall, this is going to do you fine. And especially as a beginner, just basically focus most of your efforts on getting your eye level up, and don't worry too much about the secondary stats. In regards to talent points, this build on the left is for raiding, and the one on the right is for Mythic Plus. There will be an import string in the description for both. I'm not going to go through every single talent, but the main ones that you do need to know will be spoken about and discussed in the rotational part of this video for both builds. Before we get into that, however, let's have a look at some of the core and useful cooldowns and utilities we have at our disposal as an unholy death knight. These are mostly going to be the defensive ones. Again, the offensive ones will be spoken about in the priority order they're used within the rotations. Starting at top left, then we've got the anti-magic shield, or anti-magic zone, should I say. It's a party-wide spell, damage absorb, and damage reduction that you can use. Predominantly, I use this in raids, and I don't use it as much in Mythic Plus. You do have to talent into this, and it's really, really useful. Second, then, is going to be... Icebound Fortitude, reducing your damage taken. On the bottom then, we've got Lichborn, reducing damage taken, giving you some leech, and also some really useful immunities. And then lastly on this page, we've got the Empower Rune Weapon. This makes your rune weapon super duper whooper, and if you're not sure what a rune weapon is, well, Death Knights actually have a really cool weapon enchant system called Rune Forging. You can do this at the Eberus Hold, which is where you start your journey and you have your port portal to, as a Death Knight. And as Unholy, the rune we are going to put on our weapon is Rune of the Fallen Crusader. And the Empower Rune weapon just makes your weapon go, you know, woo <laughs> makes it a lot better, basically. And again, we're going to go through this when we go through the rotation. But don't forget to enchant your weapon with this. I think what I see some people doing is they go to the auction house and just buy a normal weapon enchant, when actually Death Knights have a really much more improved version that they can use on theirs. We also have a lot of really awesome utilities at our disposal, number one being a battle res in the name of Ray's ally. Battle reses meaning you can actually resurrect an ally in battle inside combat. Chains of Ice is a really good utility, very useful in Mythic Plus being able to slow the target in Chains of Ice. On the bottom, we've got Death Grip. This is literally going to pull the target to you. Can be really good uh, enemies, that is, not allies, um, for you know moving them out of the Sanguine in Mythic Plus, things like that. Just even get someone from A to B. If you're doing achievement runs and things like that, it can also be really, really useful in like old raids and dungeons and just like really random stuff like that. Death's Advance is another really good one. Rather than slowing down a target, it's actually going to speed you up and makes it impossible for you to actually be stopped. And lastly, we have Mind Freeze, which is your kick or interrupt, where you can interrupt spellcasting on your target. So now that we're in game, let's actually go through the rotations, starting with the raid spec. So you're going to notice that my screen here is quite busy. Now, don't worry too much. These huge bars I've put on are just to teach you the rotation. You'll notice under here, however, I have a weak aura, and this is showing your resources, cooldowns, and abilities. This blue one that's ticking down is our runic power, and this is kind of something we're going to generate and then spend. And then we've also got runes. So you can see here on our first ability, Soul Re Reaper, this costs one rune. That's the green ones here, whereas our death coil costs 30 runic power, which is the blue bar. This is from Lux Foss this week, Aura. If you would like it, it's down below in the description. And if you do need any help installing it, or you're not sure how to do these things, and in fact, if you need any help after watching this video with the rotation, UI, add-ons, anything at all, please do join my Discord where I can personally help you when I have time. And also, we have a really very beginner-friendly community, very welcoming. And there's no question that it's too hard or too easy or too difficult or too silly or whatever they say um, about silly questions. There's none at all. So please do feel free if you need any help at all to join our community. So starting off then with the raid um, and single target rotation, the first thing you want to do is use this, raise dead. 
And this is going to raise up this little guy here, Limbreaver, who is my minion. We're going to want to take him up before we go into battle and keep him for all times. I'm also going to just talk around the cooldowns here. These cooldowns, uh, there's five of them I've got on here. Just use them when you can and when they're available, especially as a beginner, um, in this order. So Army of the Dead, summoning a huge legion of ghouls on an eight minute cooldown, uses one rune. You can see here it also makes a Magus of the Dead. So does this one, Apocalypse. More on that in a minute. These Maguses of the Dead are going to fit in with our set bonus this season, TLDR. The set bonus means that we actually get an extra one, and it means that they help us do more damage. It's all very passive. Don't worry about it too much. As a beginner, um, let's just concentrate on getting the core rotation down. That's pretty much all we need to know regarding that anyway. Obviously, get the set, set bonus. Um, but now I'm rambling. So <laughs> um, Dark Transformation turns your little minion into a big, a big dirty ghoul. And this is going to grant them 100% energy and the ghoul's abilities are empowered, uh, etc. Does loads of damage to nearby enemies. Unholy Assault strikes your target dealing damage, infecting the target with four festering wounds and sending you into an unholy frenzy, increasing damage done by 20%. Now, if you're wondering what are the festering wounds, you can see on my target here on the right hand side of the screen, festering wounds is basically a dot that we can stack on our target. We mainly apply them by using this one here, festering strike. So you've now got six on there. It is the backbone of the unholy spec. And you can see here um, on Festering Strike, uh, it makes a Festering Wound, a Pustulant Lesion. It's going to burst um, when you use either Scourge Strike, etc. More on that shortly. Anyway, we're going through the rotations. Uh, empower Rune Weapon. Empowering a Rune Weapon, gaining 15% haste and generating one Rune and five Runic power instantly and over 20 seconds. And then Apocalypse, again, is kind of like Army of the Dead. You know, oh, look, there's all armies of the dead rising up, including the Magus's again. Um, summons an army of the dead for 20 seconds for each posturing wound, festering wound you burst. Posturing? It's a posturing wound. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got some festering wounds on the target to be able to actually use that cooldown. But yes, TLDR, use all of these cooldowns in this order from left to right whenever they are up. Now let's go through the core rotation. First and foremost is Soul Reaper. You're going to want to use this when the target is about to be within five seconds or is at 35% health and lower. So it's sort of like an execute kind of one. Use it on cooldown when they're at 35% health or lower. Easy as that. Next one is Death Coil. And can you see that it's procced here? So this one is actually be our runic power spender. You can see you've got 100 runic power, meaning we've capped on it. We don't want to do that. We want to use our Death Coil when we're at 80 or above runic power, or when it gets a free proc like we just saw. If you're wondering how that free proc came about, it's from this talent here, Sudden Doom. You auto attacks, a chance to make an next death coil, cost no runic power. The next ability on the list, on our priority list, is actually going to be uh, Clawing Shadows, replacing Scourge Strike. And we're going to want to use this immediately after we get the free proc on death coil, and that's because of Rotten Touch here. Sudden Doom, the free proc death coil talent, is going to make your next death coil increase your Clawing Shadows damage against the target by 50% for 10 seconds. TLDR then, when we get a free proc on our coil from this talent here, Sudden Doom, we're then going to want to immediately use our Clawing Shadows in the rotation because it's going to do a load more damage. So let's just recap on that so far. We're going to keep our ghoul up, use these cooldowns in this order when we can. At 35% health and under, we're going to use Soul Reaper. We're going to use our Death Coil when we're at 80 or more Runic Power. Or when we get an instant cast free proc, well, it's always instant cast, but a free proc, like this one here. See, it's procced. You can see it here on the weak aura. When we use that, you can then see on the target, Rotten Touch. Scourge Strike damage received is increased by 50%. Now, it's not called Scourge Strike because we've replaced it with Clawing Shadows. So we're then going to use this while we have Rotten Touch on the target. After that, we're going to use Outbreak, simply to keep up the Virulent Plague on the target. That is this, you can see here, that is on our target. Simply just keep it up with outbreak see here we've got again another free death coil where i'm going to power up shadows after that we're going to use summon gargoyle and immediately use our death and decay you're going to want to stand in your death and decay because of the unholy ground talent increasing your haste by five percent when you're standing in it after that then you can see that clawing shadows is back up again on the rotation now at this point in the rotation we're going to want to use it when we have a magus up so if i use apocalypse which you can see is going to get one of our magus of the deads up that's when we're going to use our Clawing Shadows again at this point. After that, we're going to use Festering Strike. And this, again, is actually kind of the backbone of the spec. Festering Strike, remember, is the one at the start of the talent tree up here, which is going to make those Festering Wounds. And remember, the Clawing Shadows is going to cause those wounds to burst. After that, we're just going to use Death Coil as a filler. And that's it. That is the single target rotation. Let's just go through it one more time so that we know what the hell we're doing. Keep our Undead Minion up. Once he's up, he's up. Same as Hunter Pets. Use these cooldowns. 
in this order. Use your Soul Reaper at 35% and below health. Use your Death Core when you get a free proc of it, or when you're at over 80 runic power. Use your Clawing Shadows when you have Rotten Touch, which is for 10 seconds after getting a free Death Coil. Use your Outbreak to keep up Virulent Plague. Then use your Gargoyle and Death and Decay. Stay standing in the Death and Decay. When you've used Apocalypse or Army of the Dead, so you've got a Magus of the Dead up, you can use your Clawing Shadows. And use your Festering Strike to make sure you've got all of those um, Festering Wounds, not Pustulant Wounds, on the target. And then use your Death Coil as the remaining filler. And that is it. Hopefully, that made sense and was straightforward for you. Again, if you need any more help, let me know in Discord. Um, and if you do want to become a Patreon and actually support me, help get out these videos, you can open VIP tickets in the Discord where I can review your logs. And I'll look through them meticulously and tell you where you can improve on your logs with the Unholy Spec. And I can, you know, you can just open a ticket and talk to me one on one, you know, rather than in a, a class discussion channel in Discord where I can help you, um, you know, in private if you feel a bit kind of, you know, you don't want the whole Discord watching, even though they're very beginner friendly, I will say. Um, but yeah, so do consider either becoming a YouTube member or a patron if you would like that extra help um, there. Now let's have a look then at the Mythic Plus rotation. You can see then if we go into the Mythic Plus build, a lot of the talents are changing, but do not worry, it's actually even simpler, in my opinion. For Mythic Plus. So same again, keep up your raise dead. And we're just going to follow this priority on the screen. So again, remember, let's use our festering strike and get up those dirty wounds that are festering on our target. First thing we're going to use on our priority, however, is Scourge Strike. This is going to burst the festering wounds. And you can see we've got something here, this little buff. And this is Plague Bringer. So we've not taken Clawing Shadows, we've actually gone over to Plague Bringer. Scourge Strike causes your disease damage to occur 100% more quickly for 10 seconds. So we're going to use that first and foremost to keep up that Plague Bringer buff. Then we're going to use Unholy Blight. This is actually going to put Virulent Plague on the target, same as our Outbreak does. You can use Outbreak as the third priority to keep up Violent Plague if Unholy Blight is on cooldown like it is now. So you can see here there's 32 seconds left on the cooldown, yet Violent Plague is coming off in 7 seconds, so you want to use your Outbreak to keep it up on the target if Unholy Blight is on cooldown. Unholy Blight is going to basically give everyone a Violent Plague and you are surrounded by flies. Then use Dark Transformation, then use Empower Rune Weapon, then use Unholy Assault, and then use Apocalypse in that order for your cooldown. Then use Defile. This is a big, dirty grey puddle on the floor. If you remember back to the ICC raid in Wattalk, well, maybe you're actually playing it now in World of the World of the Warcraft, <laughs> Wrath of the Lich King classic. Oh my god! Um, back in the day when I used to raid, I don't raid in ICC now, but when I used to raid back in the day in ICC, like what, 10, 50, 15 years ago? Oh my gosh! Defile from the Lich King boss was hell. It was the most hellish encounter ever. So now we've got it. Defile, defile the targeted ground, dealing damage to enemies within ten. Um, in the area for 10 seconds. While you remain within your defile, your Scourge Strike, which is this first one, remember, is actually going to hit seven nearby enemies um, near the target. Every second, if any enemies are standing in the defile, it grows in size, dealing increased damage and increasing your mastery by 1%, up to 8%. Same as in the Lich King raid, you stood in it and it got bigger and bigger and it would envelop the entire platform and then we'd all be dead. It was awful. After that, we've got Epidemic. And you're going to use this when it procs, same as your Death Coil. And you can see here, I can't use it. Well, that's because it's going to increase damage of our Virulent Plagues. So let's get our Virulent Plague up. And now we can use our Epidemic. It causes each of your Virulent Plagues to flare up, dealing damage to the infected enemy and dealing additional damage to all other enemies near them. And it increases the duration of Dark Transformation, which is this one here, where your minion again turns into the big scary behemoth we can see before us. So Vir Epidemic is going to increase the duration of that Dark Transformation, and it's also going to make your um, Virulent Plague, which is here, we're keeping up, remember, it's going to make that do more damage. So if you are trying to use it and you can't, then that's because you've forgotten something earlier in the priority list, which is, of course, using Unholy Blight or Outbreak. After that, use your Abomination Limb. You're going to grow an extra arm, sprouting out an additional limb, dealing damage over 12 seconds to all nearby enemies, and it's going to pull those enemies in to you um, as well. After that, we can use our Scourge Strike um, as a sort of filler using one rune, and then after that, Festering Strike to get up the um, Festering Wounds on the target. So let's just recap on the Mythic Plus rotation again. Scourge Strike to keep up the Plague Bringer buff from the talent. Use your Unholy Blight or Outbreak to keep up Virulent Plague. Use your Dark Transformation, Empower Rune Weapon, Unholy Assault, and Apocalypse in that order. Keep up your Defile on the ground. Use your Epidemic when it's got a free proc, which is the Sudden Doom uh, talent still, or just to spend your Runic Power. And um, then after that, we're going to use Abomination Limb. Then we're going to use our Scourge Strike and lastly Festering Strike to get up those wounds if there aren't any on the target. And that's it for Mythic Plus. I think it's actually pretty straightforward for that one. You're basically just going to follow that pro rotation um, from start to finish. 
If you do want to see it in action, I do actually now stream this over on Twitch on Mondays. Um, and maybe maybe I'll actually stream it on YouTube if you guys ask nicely as well. I want to make sure that I'm covering all of um, you know, the whole audience and showing people what they want. So obviously I show it on the target dummies here because that's how it makes sense for showing you how the rotation, etc. works. But every Monday I do actually do Mythic Plus Dungeons, etc. on different specs with the idea of showing you how you can actually play them in practice rather than just in principle like we see here. So if you did like this video, please subscribe below and leave a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And Holy Death Knight is such a fun specialization. I absolutely love it. And um, do check out my other guides because I've done a hell of a lot of them for season three of Dragonfly.